Social media created uh, a bunch of great things and a bunch of very disruptive things. And, and I think what is the most disruptive to the foundational part of business that has nothing to do with the media part of social is the implications of direct relationships. So the story I tell in the book is, imagine you buy a pair of headphones from Beats by Dre, which if you're over 16, you shouldn't do because you look like a dork. I love walking down Bay Street and seeing like these guys in suits with neon Beats by Dre headphones like, where is the tattoo? Uh, like they probably have a tribal tattoo there too. So you, can't see. Um, you, have, you don't have a tribal tattoo, do you, David? Okay, good. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good way to screw up the panel. So, um, <laughs> so uh, they buy these Beats by Dre headphones. You can forget all the marketing and advertising, but let's just focus on the thin slice of the fact that Beats by Dre is telling you to like them on Facebook. And I'll only pick on Facebook because they're so massive. Um, but you buy them at, at, at Target or Walmart. Walmart's a client. So let's say it's, it's Target. And Target is telling you to like them on Facebook. And you're doing this on Facebook. So who owns the direct relationship with Mitch Joel in that relationship, right? Is it Beats by Dre? Is it Target? Or is it Facebook? So you can look at that and go, holy crap. It's not about you know, Beats fighting Skullcandy or Sennheiser or Sony. Beats is actually in direct competition for that relationship with the customer with their own business partners in the funnel. That is really massively scary. And so I'll, I'll usually pull an audience. We can do it here if you like. So who thinks in that relationship that the direct relationship should be with the brand, which would be Beats by Dre? Raise your hands if you think it should be Beats by Dre. Okay. How many people think it should be the retailer, Target? Raise your hands. How many people think it should be Facebook because you're on Facebook and they go in the data? None. So it's really interesting. I mean, I'll do this all over the world, and every audience reaction is different. And the answer to the question is that if it weren't Rotman and this were a Beats by Drake corporate event, I would tell you guys that you should own the direct relationship. But if this were a Target event, I would tell you that you should own the direct relationship. And if this were a Facebook event, I'd tell you that you should own the direct relationship. And that's, the, that's what we're saying, is that uh, everybody should. And as a consumer, though, when you sort of shift the mirror on that and go, like, I'm a consumer, that's a, that's a lot... It's a lot for a consumer who's on Facebook with you know, an average of 200 or 400 connections depending on where your demographics fall. A lot of messaging for a pair of headphones. It's a lot of commitment and it's a lot of marketing that's being shoved down their gullets. You know? So I, I just believe, I, I believe that the way in which we engage consumers has to change in the dynamics of that. And I, sort of, I think it shores up to this idea of Kickstarter. Mm. You know, this idea that you can have people who have a business idea launch it on Kickstarter or put it out there and do hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in sales of a product that doesn't exist without any, any middlemen or intermediary or gatekeepers and actually create a massive change in, in what we know about business. So I think all of those sort of things create a different perspective that all of us have to bring each and every single day to our work because although you think you have these direct relationships and you're good at it, odds are there's, something, there's somebody or something nipping at your heels.